And cutting is a little bit more of a delicate topic, I wanna say, and a delicate process because there is no food that makes you gain muscle and there's no food that's gonna make you lose body fat. This was something I feel like in the past I overly stressed about. I felt like if I did any cardio, I would lose my gains, which isn't true. I literally saw a difference when I started to prioritize high quality, good sleep. As long as you're seeing progress, don't fix what isn't broken. And I feel like this is what people overlook when they try to lose weight and it's the biggest reason why they don't see progress. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. I'm feeling like awkward for some reason today. I don't know why I just hit play and I was like, <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it because I feel like when I try to keep redoing it, it just makes it worse. So anyways, today we're gonna do a sequel of kind of my bulking slash cutting series. Last time I recently uploaded a video all about bulking, super, super in depth and detailed. So if you haven't seen that and you're interested in learning about bulking, it is linked up here. But now I wanted to do a sequel and you guys wanted to see a sequel all about cutting and how to cut effectively and specifically while maintaining muscle mass because I always get asked this question of like how I'm trying to cut, but I feel like I'm losing muscle at the same time and just losing all around size, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a really big difference between just simply losing weight and cutting down body fat while keeping like an optimal body composition. So that's what we're gonna get into today. We're gonna get into all the nitty gritty. It's gonna just be like last video separated into three different categories. So we're gonna talk about training, nutrition, and rest and recovery. I also slept literally 10 hours last night. I slept from like 10.30, woke up at 8.30, so I don't need this. But I just want a little like, a little, little, little bazinga, you know? So we're just gonna jump right into it today. So question numero uno, starting with the basics. What is cutting? How do you do it? What is the goal? So cutting is basically the concept of you doing what you can to lose weight and hopefully specifically dropping body fat specifically. And it's kind of in hopes to, after you've gone through a bulking phase and you've built up a substantial amount of muscle mass, which obviously, gonna, obviously is inevitably gonna come with some fat gain as well. The cutting portion is to then hopefully drop any of that excess body fat to then be able to really reveal the muscle that you build during your bulking phase. That's kind of why the two and traditionally go hand in hand together. And in order to do this, similarly how to how I said bulk, you need to be in a caloric surplus, you need to be in the opposite. So to lose body fat, lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. It's just science, it's not restriction, it's not anything. It is literally just science of how it works. Yes, there are other factors and components that go into it that make it a little bit more diff difficult in terms of the sense of like hormonal health, which we'll kind of touch on here. But primarily how you're going to do that is by consuming less calories than you are expending throughout the day. So by you consuming less calories than you are burning throughout the day, that is what's going to irk and urge your body to then have to tap into some fat sores to then be able to utilize energy and burn that stored fat in the most simplistic way, that's essentially what goes on. And cutting is a little bit more of a delicate topic, I wanna say, and a delicate process because similarly to how I said hormones play a role, if you do too harsh of a cutting phase, that is really going to stress your body out and it is going to cause unwanted consequences, if you will, and it's gonna cause your body to kind of then work against you as opposed to working with you. So I'm very adamant on having a very strategic approach when it comes to properly cutting that I've learned throughout years of experience and also through all of my education. And pre in previous years, I thought the more aggressive that you were with the cut, the more that you cut calories, the harder you went on cardio, the more intense cardio you did that that's what's gonna allow you to have better results. And I've learned that it really is the opposite is true. So my overall strategy when it comes to cutting and to have your body be responsive is to take a very slow and stress-free approach as much as possible. It's kind of a little bit more in, in depth here, but essentially we have something called cortisol, which is our stress hormone. And there's different things with, with throughout, you know, just the impacts of our daily life that cause our stress hormone to rise just because it makes us stressed out. And the thing with cortisol is that it's a, it's a stress storing hormone. So if our cortisol is very high, it is going to promote fat storage, which is what we do not want, obviously, if we are looking to lose body fat. And it makes sense just evolutionarily, right? If you were to think back in ancient times, if we're in a stressed out state, if we don't know when food's coming and we don't have time to eat because we're fighting for survival, this is very dramatic, but it's where it stems from, your body's like, okay, I need to slow down my system so that I will still be able to make use of this energy that I have stored in order to make me last 
for this long time because I don't know when I'm gonna get food again. I don't know when it's gonna be safe and relaxing for me to be able to eat again. So that's why a slow and as stress-free approach as possible is what's going to allow you to have the best results. And I feel like this is what people overlook when they try to lose weight and it's the biggest reason why they don't see progress. to prop this camera up in the vehicle in the car oh wait i know what i could do you guys are just a little lopsided <gasps> got it okay we just arrived at the gym and i'm eating the rest of my banana because i'm always like i'm not really hungry but then by the time i finish my workout and filming blah 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 it's like late in the afternoon i'm like you didn't eat anything between breakfast and now like you need a snack so Anyways, I realized I didn't show you guys any before and after photos. So just like how I've gone through two bulking phases, I've gone through two cutting phases after each bulk. So this was me in the heat of my first bulk. This is me after the cut of my first bulk. After my second bulk, I went through a really hard just phase in my finished journey, which is a story for a different day. Maybe I'll do a whole video on this because I'm surprised I haven't. I ended up gaining more weight after I tried to cut for the first time after that second bulk. So I really struggled to lose weight. And so I gained more weight. This is what I looked like. So this was a little bit after that first bulk and then when I finally cut down like a year later I got wicked wicked shredded. I want to start with training because I feel like it. It's a little bit different than bulking in the sense of like how I said in my previous video you want to be training as hard as you can trying to hit, move as much weight as you can more weight more sets etc etc just trying to always increase difficulty with progressive overload. Now it still is very much so important in a cut to make sure that you're training hard, especially when you're trying to preserve muscle mass in your cut. If you aren't giving your body a reason to keep the muscle mass you already have, your body is going to lose the muscle mass when it's in the caloric surplus because muscle just gain, burns, excuse me, it to maintain muscle tissue, this is what I should say, it requires more energy, it burns more energy to simply maintain a pound of muscle mass compared to how much energy and how many calories it takes to burn to maintain a pound of fat. That's just the way it is. That's why that's kind of where that it comes from when people say that when you are, when you have more muscle mass on your body, your metabolism is higher because your body burns more calories. If you are already in a calorie deficit and your body's trying to make use and preserve these calories that it is consuming, what is it what's the smartest thing to do it's going to release the tissue that is consuming a majority of calories in order to make sure that it is preserving more calories within its body so you need to give your body a reason to keep maintaining that muscle tissue or else it's just kind of going to get rid of it in one way or another so in order to do that you need to be still putting stimulus on the muscle to tell your body hey this muscle is still useful for me i need this in my day-to-day -day activity don't get rid of that because we need that still to function because there's still hard tasks that we're being put through when we're training in the gym that we need the muscle for so are you going to be slamming PRs when you're going through a cut? Most likely not. So don't kill yourself over that, but you still should be training hard so that you're still challenging your muscles and that's what's going to help you preserve your muscle mass first and foremost. Your training really shouldn't change in the sense of strength training, right? So still pretty much the same exercises. You shouldn't really need to change your whole entire split. I feel like that's kind of a mis conception that people are like okay i'm looking to go for a cut i'm going to completely rearrange everything and do xyz instead of what i was doing before your same protocol that you were doing to build muscle is still very similar to the same protocol that it's going to take to lose weight and like still work towards creating that optimal body composition i will say as you get deeper and deeper into a cut and deeper into a bigger deficit you may need to adjust just your training volume again to minimize the stress on your body because going into a calorie deficit is a stress on the body and also training is 
still stress around the body. So if you're going too far into a deficit with your calories and you're training a little bit too hard for in proportion how many calories you're eating, that's going to cause a big stress on your body. So we'll get to that in a bit. But if you are lowering your calories to a very extensive point, if you're really deep in your cut, you may need to pull back volume a little bit. What does that mean? Maybe if you're training five days a week, go back to four strength training sessions a week or maybe three strength training sessions a week, something like that to help to even it out a little bit and just to make sure that you're kind of mitigating the stress on your body given that you're intaking less calories and there's not as sufficient amount of calories to fuel these sessions. The next thing I will say is just a, maybe a tool to help keep your heart rate up and burn more calories in your weight training session. You may want to add in maybe some supersets now or tri sets or a little bit more of just decreasing your rest time in between your sets. That may also help to get your heart rate up. Again, don't feel like you have to do that, but especially if maybe if you're someone who's not really looking to turn towards cardio and you just kind of want to amplify the strength training you're already doing, that's a great way to kind of add in a cardiovascular component it. Next thing I want to talk about is a step goal. And if you are regular on my channel, then I sound like a broken record to you right now. I know just bear with me. If you are new, let me be the one to emphasize to you how important a step goal is when you're trying to lean out, lose weight, go on a cut. Literally, this has single handedly changed my life and I'm not being over dramatic. Like I, <laughs> that made me think of the TikTok sound, TikTok sound, but for real, it is so powerful. And let me tell you why. Basically, I want to classify a step goal as cardio. It's more of just daily movement. But back to what I said about how your body burns calories all throughout the day, there's kind of a bracket of that that's due to calorie expenditure from your actual organized exercise, whether that's from, you know, strength training or your cardio, whatever, whatever. But then with that is just overall your activities of daily living and just how active you are in your normal lifestyle that's not constituting a workout and that's what this step goal falls under and it really makes a huge difference when you just change overall from a more sedentary lifestyle to a more active lifestyle by upping your step goal and what's beautiful about it is like I said it's inevitably increasing that calorie expenditure, which is going to help us create that calorie deficit, but it's without the stress that comes from normal organized, you know, like a cardio session or a normal exercise session. It honestly simultaneously relaxes the body. So it helps our body to de-stress, which is like I said previously is really important with creating a prosperous environment for fat loss. And secondly, it's not harsh at all. So it doesn't take any time for your body to recover. If you were to do really harsh cardio sessions, that's also going to be stressing out the body because that just causes that yields a higher recovery time because they're more intense sessions, but you can walk for miles a day and your body won't need a ton of extra time to recover or anything like that. So it's just really a beautiful way to increase your caloric expenditure without feeling like it. Um, and while also simultaneously de-stressing the body and helping to keep our cortisol at optimal levels, it really just is such a life hack. So for me, my conventional goal when I'm in a fat loss phase is to hit 10,000 steps a day, but I like to kind of work up to that. So like if I'm, you know, if usually if it's in the heat of winter and I'm not walking a lot and my average is like four to five K, I'll increase that to eight K steps for a more realistic goal. Then from there again, cause we're always trying to progress because our body and metabolisms are always adapting. Then to progress and deepen into the cut, I will move up to 10 K steps. That's a good way. I don't know what it is, but the 10 K benchmark really does wonders. And I really can tell a difference when I shift from that 8K to 10K steps every single solitary day. If you are someone who doesn't have a step tracker or anything like that, I will do it more so for time. Again, this is going to vary depending on how active you are in your day. I'm pretty sedentary otherwise in my day because I'm usually just sitting on my computer editing and stuff. So for me, if I can walk for like an hour a day, that usually will set me up for hitting 10K steps a day in conjunction to how active I am for the rest of the day. So that's kind of a more intuitive approach for you. So that's what I would incorporate first is stick with your strength training, add in a step goal, really do your best to work your way up to the 10K step goal, and then think about adding in a cardio session. For me, cardio is the last thing that I put in when I'm trying to do a cut because again, I'm trying to progress in all areas first before I need to utilize all of my resources just to ensure that I'm still a I have room and have other tools to progress me through my cut if and when I do hit a plateau once I've been seeing some progress by increasing my step goal I will add in a couple of cardio sessions now cardio is cardio so don't overthink this step do whatever cardio that you don't hate and in a 
style of cardio that you are actually going to stick to. Now, when it does come to maintaining muscle mass, this was something I feel like in the past I overly stressed about. I felt like if I did any cardio, I would lose my gains, which isn't true. If you are still strength training about three to five days a week, at least you, that will be enough stimulus on your muscles to still be maintaining that muscle mass. However, I do still believe and know from my research and experience that there are still more optimal modes of cardio that will help to promote muscle maintenance. So for example, that's going to be styles of cardio that's still recruiting muscle as opposed to things like running and things like just being on the elliptical that I don't find is optimal. Again, if you do those things, it's not like, no, you're going to lose all your muscle mass, but they aren't optimal for helping to maintain gains. Now there are different categories when it comes to cardio. There's like low intensity cardio slash moderate intensity cardio. I kind of just group those together. And then there's more so high intensity cardio. So what I like to do, if we're talking about high intensity cardio, I like to include like a hit circuit or or like a functional training circuit that has to do more so with body weight strength, but it's still getting my heart rate up. It has to do more so with athletic training, or I will do a stationary bike with the settings of like kind of varying intensity. Or if I'm looking for something that's low, more low to moderate intensity, I'll do like an incline walk on the treadmill, Stairmaster, or I will do that stationary bike, but have it be more of like a steady state of intensity and resistance. Those are some of the cardio sessions that I like to opt for. But next I want to move into HIIT training and just high intensity interval training as a whole. This is something that I overdid so freaking much during my second cut. There is no need to do more than one to two high intensity cardio sessions a week, especially for women with our hormones. There really is no need. All right, we're back from the gym and I'm making some lunch, which this is so random, but I just saw my neighbors across the street. Such a classic, like embarrassing story. Basically, I always talk to myself, like it's no secret, hence why I like to vlog. And I got out of the car, so like the garage door was open and I was going, like just, not like the normal, like talking to myself, like I was just saying random stuff, like making weird noise, like just being weird because I'm weird. And I was like, hey, bah, 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 like making really, <laughs> making no sense. And I come around the corner from the car and my neighbors were outside and they totally looked at me and were like, are you okay? And I just pretended that I was on the phone. Like I just kept talking to make it sound like I was talking to someone. Cause I just was like, you know what? We're going to roll with this punch and like, just let it bounce off us. But I'm making what I'm calling my protein guac, which is like kind of a stretch. Also this Avi is kind of a stretch but I think it'll do. Also, why was that so not on center? <laughs> okay, anyways, but basically I just will have a can of tuna, as you guys know, but then I'll play, I'll mix it with avocado primarily. Um, if I do have hummus, I'll mix a little bit of hummus in there as well, just to help with lubricating. But <laughs> basically looks like this, and then same thing how you would make guacamole, essentially, but there's gonna be tuna in it, and then I dip chips with it. I've been liking the Siete hint of lime chips for 30 grams of protein, you know? Um, but so that takes us to the nutrition portion of this video. And like I said previously, the whole goal is to create a calorie deficit. Now, when people are trying to lose body fat, I don't know why, but everyone's like, I need to lose 10 pounds by tomorrow. And you're like, let's like slow, <laughs> tone it down a notch. And everyone thinks that they need to take this really drastic approach with their calories. Same thing too with a bulk, how you wanna start small and then kind of get deeper into your bulk or deeper into your surplus. Same thing here, you wanna start small, again, because we want to mitigate as much stress as possible to create a very prosperous fat loss environment for your body. So there's no need to jump into like a major, major caloric deficit. You're more than okay to start with about a 250 calorie deficit, meaning whatever your maintenance calories are, you would subtract 250 calories from those and that would be your calorie target every single solitary day. Again, spoken this in the last video, but if you don't know how to calculate what your maintenance calories would be, you can go to just an online calculator. It will spit out a number, not always super accurate, but you can kind of base off that number, try that number for a little bit and just see how your weight, you know, adjusts and then adjust the caloric intake from there. Or you can just track what your honest intake is for like a week or two find the average of that and see what your average daily intake is for the day to find where you are currently at for your own maintenance is a really good way to start. Or if you're like me and I never tracked when I 
cut weight like rarely ever I maybe I would do it for like a short period of time but it was never for like the whole duration of my cut or anything it just was to give me some perspective but I basically would listen to my hunger cues again but I would stop just shy of being like actually full I would stop when I was satiated and I would more so visually look at my portion sizes and make the those portion sizes smaller just to help me inevitably intake a little bit lower amount of calories there is no food that makes you gain muscle and there's no food that's going to make you lose body fat. It's all coming down to more so what your portion sizes are. So that's a common question. What should I eat to gain weight? What should I gain to lose? What should I eat to lose weight? What's more important is your overall portion sizes. So don't feel like you need to switch up your whole entire diet. Otherwise, all you really need to do is just decrease those portion sizes. It's also helpful to make some swaps within your diet to help you achieve that lower caloric intake. So for example, substituting cauliflower rice for regular rice, you know, maybe lower calories calorie like wraps or something as opposed to like really hefty bread things like that that are just lower calorie swaps that will help you to achieve that caloric target i really want to be able to go walk before the sun continues to go behind the mountains so you want to start off with a small deficit like i'm saying because also your training is what's going to also help you be in that caloric deficit because you can create that deficit by either in taking less calories or also expending more calories, which is kind of what we talked about with that step goal and things like that. So again, that's why there's no need to greatly, greatly cut back on food because your training is going to help make up for the rest of that deficit to keep you on track to actually see progress. How to know when to continue to drop calories. If you are a numbers person, same thing to what I said in the last video about bulking. If you find that you're still losing weight at a certain amount of calories, there's no need to drop your calories any lower because you are still seeing progress. You want to be able to accumulate and gather as much progress as you can at each caloric level and just at any phase within your protocol, whether that's with your cardio, your training, whatever. As long as you're seeing progress, don't fix what isn't broken. Until you see like a plateau in your weight, you're not seeing any progress, that's when you can drop calories a little bit again and ride that wave until you're not seeing any progress anymore and then decrease again. So that's kind of what I mean when you're starting with a lower deficit and then working your way up to like about a 500 calorie deficit or so, that's how you would slowly do it. And you can still do that intuitively, you know, like maybe be taking progress photos as well to see if you're seeing your body change or if you feel any different, if your clothes are fitting any better, if your measurements have gone down, if you've seen a plateau, then that's a sign for you that then you can, you know, drop calories a little bit and decrease portion sizes just a little bit more. And another reason why it's important, especially in a cut to go really slow with that deficit is because I kind of picture it as well, back to the concept of how you don't want to stress out your body. If you go into a really deep deficit, like I'm saying, going to spike up your cortisol levels, fat storing hormone, your body's just going to be really stressed out. And what do we want? We really want a stress free environment. So going slowly into that deficit helps to kind of inch your body along without it really knowing we're kind of tricking them like that. You can let it go. You can release some fat cells. It's okay without them really realizing it's like if you were talking to a baby and you want to kind of get them, you want them to try to walk, right? If you take this candy and run, you know, however far away from them, you're like, here, come get it. The baby is most likely going to sit down and stop, start crying. But if you kind of slowly inch the baby by keeping the candy, like right in front of them, they keep trying to reach out and grab the candy. And then that's what takes them the whole entire distance. That's how I visualize my metabolism, if you will, when I'm trying to go through a fat loss phase, I'm trying to inch it along to keep it going and keep releasing fat cells and burning fat cells to help me achieve my goal. Backtracking a little bit, also having those smaller deficits and going slowly into a deficit will also 100% help you maintain the current muscle that you have because it will still have enough fuel to be fueling and maintaining that muscle mass. So that slow decrease is also important to help with optimal body composition. Now I wanna talk about macronutrients, which is our protein, carbs, and fats, and essentially is the percentage, like the composition of what we are eating. So protein is obviously super important to help build up our muscles. That's what's feeding our muscles. That's what's helping with recovery. That's what helps to give our body the signal to say, Hey, maintain this muscle. We need it. We're getting fed a lot of protein. We're training with the stimulus that's recruiting the muscle. We need to keep this muscle mass. So keeping a high protein intake is going to help maintain that muscle you have. And it's also really advantageous when you're in a cutting phase and you are consuming less calories than normal because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. A lot of people think it is fats because they just are more calorically dense, but the actual breakdown of protein, it takes more energy for your body to digest, which is point A, which also means that it's burning more calories to simply just digest protein in comparison to something like a simple carbohydrate. 
And second of all, it just keeps you fuller for longer. It takes more work for your body to break down and utilize the protein. So I'm sure you guys will have you. It's so easy to experience this. It's very easy to eat like 500 calories and carbs. Like it's very easy to eat 500 calories if you're eating donuts, but it's really hard to eat 500 calories of straight just chicken breast protein it's so clear how freaking filling it is and how satiating it is so protein not only helps with weight management and helping you stay in that deficit because it helps keep you fuller for longer it makes you feel actually full and satiated but it's also helping to maintain that muscle mass that you already have so with that being said this decrease of calories that we're talking about are mostly going to be coming from your carbs and your fats because that's just mainly just energy source which your body can kind of afford to let that go and that's what's going to cause your body to tap into your fat cells to be used as energy so with fat Fats are really important. That's like nuts, seeds, almond butter. That's still really important for overall hormonal health, brain function, and that's kind of a slower burn energy source as opposed to carbohydrates are our body's preferred energy source. Um, and it's a quicker burn of energy. So fats are still important for like kind of that hormonal situation helps to keep our body at ease. So we don't want to go too low on fats again for our hormone health and hormones contribute to everything. And especially if you're a female, really important to stay with the not dropping your fats too low. So that's why primor primarily this decrease of calories is coming from you taking away carbohydrates away. And like I said about protein, how you want it to be still a high proportion of your diet, you're still going to want to stay in that same range that I gave you for bulking, right? Anywhere between 0 0.7 to 1.1 grams of protein per pound you weigh. The leaner you are, the closer you're going to be at the higher end of that scale. So with that being said, if that's kind of staying the same, but your calories are lower, that's kind of going to need to cause the percentage of your diet coming from carbs and fats to inevitably decrease as well. We're in my bathroom again, and I just took a body shower. And you know, and like, I, well, I guess I don't know if you know, but like I like I get so excited to literally just feel my skin just burn in the shower. Like I know the shower is so hot. I just want to marinate in there and like, oh, it feels so good. Usually to the point where I'm like, I'm literally hot now. Like I need to get out like uh, a hot tub, which probably isn't a good use of resources, but I can't help it because this house is always so cold. Anyway, moving on. Also, one last thing I want to speak about before we switch topics from nutrition. I also want to say, do not underestimate the power of eating whole foods. They are more satiating, like I said, similarly to protein. They take more work for your body to fully digest. There's also just better bioavailability of nutrients, meaning your body is able to process the food better and extract those nutrients. So you're going to feel satiated. It's going to help with you know cravings and things like that because you're actually going to be have getting the nutrients that your body has been needing. And also they're inevitably lower calorie and higher volume food. So you're going to feel like you're eating more food, but it's going to be lower calorie and you're going to feel actually full from it and satiated. So I feel like so many people when they cut, they try to have like, they take shortcuts or have like dieting foods and things like that or packaged foods. It's like, oh, this is high protein. It's probably good for dieting. Like, no, stick to as close, like, especially for me when I'm in a cutting phase, like I am so freaking on all clean like whole foods as much as possible because you're also just getting the best bang for your buck and I just promise it makes everything so much easier also I still use Osea products I'm still affiliated with them as you can see they're literally almost gone just put this on I barely have any of this left but I'm gonna do the hyaluronic C serum I still have a code with them I still get commission so if you guys shop through that I get a little piece of that so thanks so much for supporting me you guys know the deal Leo um, but I really love them because all their products are clean, non-toxic skincare, which is what your girl really values. And this has helped so much with just making my skin look so much glowier and healthy. It's literally the only brand I trust for skincare. I'm also going to use this Daughter of the Land. It's, it's just called the oil, but it's like rosehip oil. So I also like to put this on, but my face is about to be greasy. So anyways, lastly for rest and recovery, same thing goes for what I said with bulking, except it's honestly even more important, but people don't really realize it with cutting. Cause like, again, people think the more they do the better, but it's so important to make sure that you're staying stress-free as much as possible. And sleep is so important. Oh, I'm so surprised I didn't say that in my last video. Sleep is so, so, so important and so underrated when it comes to fat loss, because sleep is when your body is able to recover, recover from the stressful protocol that you're putting on it and actually respond to the stimulus like that's when your body adapts and changes so please prioritize seven to nine hours of sleep every single night I promise like I remember when I was really in the heat of my cut back in 2020 like a legitimate 
cut I lost like about 15 pounds and I was I literally saw a difference when I started to prioritize high quality good sleep I went to bed at 10 I was up at 7 and like I promise you like everything felt so much better so that is huge I'm also someone who's big into meditation as you guys know that helps with just overall stress management. And in terms of training, right, you wanna make sure that you're giving your body and muscles enough time to recover. So anywhere between like 70, 48, excuse me, 72 hours in between training muscle groups. Other thing I should have said in the nutrition category, make sure that you're on your water intake because, well, because proper hydration just helps with energy levels and just it's good for overall like your physiological health, but it also helps with feeling satiated as well. So often that we feel like we're hungry when really we're just either kind of bored or thirsty, honestly. And I tell a big difference with my desire to keep snacking um, when I'm not properly hydrated. So I aim for a good amount of water. I'll have like three or four um, 40 ounce water bottles throughout the day. That just makes me feel really good. And also again, if you are lower on calories, it just helps you feel a little bit more full as well. Again, not saying to use water to starve yourself. I'm just saying. It helps make you feel a little bit more satiated when you are on a lower calorie diet. All right, dudes, I think that concludes this video. It's like 7 p.m. now. I'm gonna eat some homemade soup because I made some homemade soup and it's really good and I've been in my like cooking and baking area that I really have been enjoying. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gave you some helpful pointers. Hope you guys learned something. Let me know down below in the comments which was most helpful or like something that something that was most impactful i guess that you learned if you will anyways if you did enjoy the video as well i'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up helps this video reach more people helps us grow and helps just impact more lives which is always the goal and if you also want to subscribe definitely do it because we're getting back on track to posting two videos a week every thursday and friday and yeah i'm sending you so much love and hopefully i'll see you in the next one peace out